Hey there, everybody. Long time no see. I stumbled across a very, very old music theory book at a half price book, which is basically a thrift store for books. So this is called Harmony by somebody named G.W. Chadwick. Uh, I looked on Amazon and there were only two reviews of it, one saying that it was good and one saying that it was kind of complicated. But nonetheless, the thing about this book is it's actually from 1897, a very, very old book. So what I thought we'd do was I thought we'd get a good lesson on modulation from Mr. Chad or Chadwick. We'll call him Chad. So Chad is going to teach us about modulation. We're going to see how accurate it is, if it's something that we should kind of keep in mind, and just overall what's the mindset was about a hundred years ago. So let's dive into some modulation. Here we go. The connection of chords belonging to different keys by means of harmonies common to both is called modulation. As different keys are said to be related in proportion to the number of tones in common between them, it follows that those of the dominant and subdominant with their parallels are the nearest in tonality to any given tonic. For example, so we're going to look at the example here in a second, but what does that whole sort of ordeal mean? So the definition of modulation in this sort of terms is the connection of chords belonging to different keys by means of harmonies common to both, which is true. Technically speaking, you can modulate to any sort of key, especially when they have common tones within each other. So let's take a look at this example right here. So for instance, not for example, the scale of C has C, D, E, F, G, A, B, right? Just as it says right here. Scale of G major has G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G, right? So we have one sharp. And then the scale of F major has F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and then we're back to F. Every tone of G major exists in C except for F sharp, right? So they're the same scale except we're adding an F sharp. In terms of F major, every tone of F major exists in C except for B flat, right? So we have a B flat in there. So they're almost the same thing, right? But there's one note difference. So what we're saying here is if you're going to modulate, those tend to be very easy ways of modulation is when we're on the circle of fifths and there are certain notes. So when you're on the circle of fifths, take a look at what key you're in and take a look at some nearby keys. The chances are we're probably going to have a lot of similar notes, which means that we're going to probably have a lot of similar chords. So these chords as tonics coincide with the triads erected on the two, the three, the four, the five, and six degrees of the scale. And when a simple melody forsakes its own key temporarily, it usually does not stray further away than to one of these related keys. So this is the thing about these older books is they use quite big and dramatic words like forsake or erected or something like that right so here's a little note that they said some theorists define related keys as those whose signatures differ not by more than one accidental so in some ways i agree with that like mostly when we're thinking of common tones we're thinking of things that are very similar in our accidentals right but not in every case in my opinion so the mere succession of chords of different keys does not necessarily constitute a modulation. In fact, it is entirely possible for any two major tonic chords to succeed one another in such a manner as to be mutually related to the same key. For example, so let's take a look at what exactly all that gibberish means here. So we are in the key of C major. So we have a C in the bass and then we have a G, C and E in the treble clef. And then right here, it looks like we are modulating in the key of D flat. So we're going to take a look at what exactly that can mean. You can have chords 
that are in different keys and that doesn't necessarily mean a modulation so in fact it is entirely possible for any two major tonic chords to succeed one another in such a manner as we really related to the same key okay so check this out we got c major and we have a one chord and then we have d flat major and then we have a one chord right or you can simply say that it's we're in the key of f minor and we have a five chord to a six chord right that's one meaning of it and that's not necessarily a modulation correct now the other example in here example b we are in the key of c major again so we still have our c major chord right and we have our second chord as a b major chord okay but possibly a better way of saying it is that we're in the key of e minor and we have a six chord to a five chord right so what we're basically saying here is that modulation is often overdone with when people are using figured bass and oftentimes it's just them using borrowed chords it's just them saying the wrong key entirely and things like that so not everything necessarily is a modulation but let's keep going a little bit so the tonic triad of c major and the tonic triad of d flat major are also the dominant and subdominant of the key of f minor right so dominant meaning the fives submediate meaning the six the tonic triad of C major and the tonic triad of B major are also the submediate and dominant, so the three and the five in the key of E minor, right? All the other possible successions of major tonic triads will be found demonstrated in lesson whatever that is. Okay, so a change of tonality convincing to the ear must be accomplished by means of a connecting harmony which contains a tone or tones foreign to the original key and belonging to the new one so this is essential for when you're listening to a song and you're not entirely sure if there was actually a modulation you need to trust your ears and we need to have established this new key by using more notes in the new key right the chords most commonly used for the purpose are the dominant and diminished seven so our tension chords right so if you really want to convince someone that we're in a new key you need to use a dominant chord or a diminished chord in this new key so that way you can properly tonicize this new key and then continuously establish that you're in this new key okay so let's look at some examples down here in a second for this reason the major and minor triads and seventh chords on every degree of the scale excepting the fifth and the seventh like we just said seventh of minor is fine are ambiguous in tonality being related to more than one key so they're basically saying you can't just rely on things like the three chord right or the six chord so you need to start really relying on those heavy tension chords in order to solidify the modulation right so taking a look over here we have c major and they wrote a two chord here and then we have d minor which we're at our one chord here okay then we have b flat major as our three chord f major as our six chord right so basically what we're saying as you can see the chord doesn't necessarily change until we add the actual key signature therefore this isn't really the right chord choice to use for modulation right you can use it as part of it as a passing chord or something like that but the real magic is going to happen over here with these chords okay those would be good ones to use for modulating it to another key okay so continuing on with this whole craziness such triads are supertonics medians dominance subdominance and submedians right so we have supertonic is our two median is our three dominant is our five subdominant is four submedian is six right according to their relation to a given tonic the combination of major triad and minor seventh okay major triad and minor seventh so that's a dominant seven or diminished triad with a diminished seven so that's a fully diminished seven chord however is never found except on the dominant of the major and minor and on the seventh of the minor respectively so let's check out the example and see exactly what they mean by this so here we have our c chord and that's a one five that's totally normal but then what's kind of weird over here is we have our c chord but then they say we're in the key of g major and we're going to do a dominant seven chord in the key of g major which would be a d seven chord which is right here we have a d f sharp we've got our a and then we've got our c or rather i think they skipped the a which is fine they just went right to the c at the top there in the soprano voice and then we're tonicizing g major so this listen the best way you can describe this is a secondary dominant okay 
I have videos on these secondary dominants, but this is a really weird way of saying that we're modulating because it might just be a secondary dominant. You don't know. You got to listen to the rest of it. But if now the progression at A is given, the ear recognizes the G tried as the dominant, right? So if you hear this one five, it's going to sound like this is the dominant. And then if we interpose the chord X, okay, in example B, so this stuff over here, the G triad becomes a new tonic preceded by its dominant, right? Exactly what we just said. If then the change of key is to be made permanent, the modulation must be followed by a complete cadence in a new key and any of the forms, which is yada, yada, yada. Okay, so you got to cadence your your stuff okay you can't just leave things hanging it's a really good idea to use something like a perfect authentic cadence or maybe a even a half cadence would totally work in this situation i wouldn't recommend a plagal cadence or something like that if you don't know about cadences i actually have a video on that as well so definitely go check that out there are four main types of cadences um so continuing on a formula for a permanent change of key might therefore be as follows let X represent the key to be modulated into. Let A represent the key to be modulated from. So A is our key, right? And then we're modulating. X is our new key. So you can use, literally look at this, a diminished 7 or a dominant 7 into a 1, right? That's a really good way to do it. Cadence in the new key, you can do a 4, 1, 5, 1, right? That's a totally common chord progression too. Use your key tension chords when you modulate okay it's going to really help you out a lot since any given tonic may be succeeded by the dominant or the diminished seventh chord of any other key in one way or another it follows that the above formula stands for a complete system of modulation from any key to all of the others so let's take a look at this last example here so we've got our c chord which is our one then we've got our g which is our dominant seven and then we've got back to our one okay so let's see what this one means so we have i think they just label it for b right here c and then we have d okay so we have our c chord let's see if we can figure this out okay let me adjust this a little bit okay so we're down here and we have our c chord so let's write our one right here okay now right here let's figure out what chord this is exactly so we have a six five so we are in what first inversion seventh chord okay so we have an f sharp so that's a really good indication that this might be a d chord because we're in first inversion and yes we have a d we have an a and then we have a c right so this would obviously indicate a dominant seventh chord in the key of d major and then to top it all off we're ending in g major here so you can even just write this our f sharp down here right so here's what you can write you could basically write five we could write g dot dot to the center that you're in g and then you can write six five and then you are back to your one chord in the key of g major right here right so that's pretty much what they're saying and these are all really good cadences that you can use like with smooth voice leading as you can see we keep the soprano in the same spot which is really good the bass when you're talking about smooth voice leading always has the upper hand when it comes to moving things around. So I highly recommend you take advantage of that and then try to keep the middle ones also moving smoothly. So basically the soprano and the bass, they got the good stuff. And then the middle ones try to keep them in the same fashion. So it looks like all these other ones are basically inversions of the same chords. Okay. So right here we have a four, three, which is second inversion seventh chord. So this is another D chord, but except we have the a in the bass. And then over here, they just write a two here, which basically means four, two, which is a seventh chord in third inversion with the seven at the bottom. OK, relatively speaking, these all mean basically the same thing, but it's a really good way of getting these uh, modulations down. OK, so at A, B, C and D, the root of the tonic chord of C major becomes the seventh of the dominant chord of G. Any inversion of the dominant seventh may be used. OK, so it's going to be the same whole ordeal except you're going to use a diminished chord and as you can see you can do this in any sort of fashion okay so let's talk about a diminished chord in the key of g major okay so basically what you got to think about is that f sharp so that's the seven right and then you'd have an a chord 
then you'd have a C chord, right? And then you'd have your E flat in there. So that's why right here it looks a little clustered because we have the F sharp and the E flat in there. That's what creates that diminished seven chord. Okay. Same ordeal though with everything else in here. Okay. So we're trying to modulate into G major for all these, as you can see, et cetera, et cetera. The following tables give the modulation from the tonic to the dominant of C major with every position in the inversion of five, seven and the diminished seven chords. Okay. So it's kind of the same ordeal down here, basically more modulation. And li listen, here's, here's a really good helpful hint for you guys who are doing some sort of harmonic analysis and you're trying to figure out modulation. Easiest way to figure this out is if you're in the key of C major and you start seeing accidentals repeated a lot like if you were in the key of c major like this and you kept seeing this f sharp repeat everywhere that is your indication that you've probably modulated okay make your life a lot easier if you just see one or maybe two then maybe it was just a temporary little accidental right so you got to wager it and you got to use your ear so even more really cool stuff here so like yeah we've got our d7 chord then we're modulating back to g okay really really cool note as before explained the diminished seven belongs strictly to the minor mode only that's n why is that a thing because but is used as a melodic form in major <laughs> is so common okay note as before explained the diminished seventh belongs strictly to the minor mode only but it's used as a melodic form in major is so common and familiar even the most unpretentious compositions and its usefulness so great as a medium for modulation that the student may well become familiar with it at this point so that's kind of a weird way of putting it but yeah diminish definitely sounds better in minor keys but i mean major it still works in my opinion but typically when you use some sort of diminished chord, it sounds a little bit cooler in a minor key, in a minor tonicization. So if you're in the key of C major and you use a B diminished, try modulating or rather just tonicizing A minor, the relative minor, okay? So the next chapter has to do with modulating to the subdominant, which is a really relatively cool thing that you can do. Let's see what they have to say about that. So you can modulate to the four. So the subdominant or dominant below the tonic is as nearly related to the tonic as the dominant above the tonic in modulating into this key through its dominant seventh, the root, the third, and the fifth of the tonic become the root, the third, and the fifth of the dominant. Yes, dominant seventh in a new key, the minor seventh being merely added. Okay, so I think I know what they mean by this. So, so we're in the key of C major, okay? This what chord is this typically a c7 chord okay a dominant seven chord okay so c dominant seven so you're basically taking your tonic making it a dominant and then modulating to your subdominant so you play your one this is something that paganini did a lot so watch my video on the paganini crossroads stuff and i explained this already but you're basically taking a one chord changing that into a dominant seven and then you're using that to modulate to your original four chord, which in this case is an F chord, okay? And you could do this in a variety of different ways, okay, as it's kind of saying here. So in the, modulate, in the modulation through the diminished seven, the position at A is bad on account of the augmented second in the tenor, okay? So they don't want you to do that, I guess. Um, let's see what they're talking about here. So we have our one chord which is a C chord. Then we have our F key, but we have our diminished seven, which would be E diminished, right? So we'd have an E, a G, a B flat and a D flat, right? Yep. There we go. Okay. So then you can, I guess, technically speaking, they're saying that this is the augmented second isn't the best thing to do there, but then you can still modulate into F major using that. So that's kind of cool. So it's basically you're taking your median from C major, which is your three chord, changing it to a diminished chord, and then going into F major from there. So pretty cool. You can do that in all those inversions there. This may be avoided by approaching the seventh from the roots of the tonic as at B, C, and D, whereby the third of C, one becomes the root of F, yada, yada. Okay, so basically what they're saying here is you can use the seventh from the roots of the tonic like this 
the seventh right here, this is a good place to put it, okay? Because all it is is a C7 chord. Put the C at the bottom here, have the B flat right there. That's a, not a bad way of phrasing it. And then, and then you can just have the bass go up to there. So that's another good way of doing it. So much better voice leading there, I suppose. It's funny because essentially all of these things in this book so far are secondary dominance, okay? That's the key takeaway here is secondary dominance lead to virtually any sort of key. And in another case, secondary diminished chords like we're seeing now can also defer to going into any other key, okay? I'm hoping that this is kind of making sense because they gave us a lot more exercises and more modulation from its parallel, which is another really cool thing that you can definitely do. So let's see what they're saying with this real quick. So in modulating from a given major key to its parallel minor through the dominant seventh, the third of the original tonic triad becomes the roots of the new dominant seventh chord. So let's see, modulating from a given major key to its parallel minor through the dominant seven, the third of the original tonic triad becomes the root of the new dominant seventh chord. Oh, okay. So I don't know if maybe this was just the, the time that they were talking about this, but look at this. This is your one. This right here is E7. What do we use to tonicize with E7 to tonicize? A minor. So basically what they're saying is this. Okay. That's a little confusing because parallel, that's not what parallel is. Parallel would be from C major to C minor. So this would have to be like some sort of a G7 or something like that, but it's not. So that's a little weird this connecting tone is not utilized in the case of the dominant seventh and blah blah blah. okay so unless i'm unless i'm seeing something wrong here let me know if i'm seeing something wrong but this is a c chord and this is yeah it's an it's a the g sharp symbolizes the seven right the progression from the original tonic to the diminished seven okay so this is a diminished thing so let's check this out so in theory i'm not even going to look at it yet what we should have is our tonic chord being c major then we're going to have a G sharp diminished and then it should lead to A minor, right? So we have C major, G sharp, B, good, D and F. Yep, there you go. Modulated to A minor. So this is the thing about some of these old books is you have to watch out for the fact that some of the things that they say don't really hold up to today's vocabulary a little bit, okay? But the theory of itself actually makes a lot of sense, right? These are just more ways that you can use some of these um ways and they have a lot of really good ways of making this th this stuff sound a lot better using proper harmony okay and good voice leading okay so pretty cool stuff so far modulating from a minor key to its parallel major is that going to be i wonder if that's going to be the same thing where it's going to be like are we in the key of the most of a good minor key to its parallel major means the dominant seventh of the progression by contrary motion. Okay, so contrary motion means that what? One voice moves one way and then the other moves the opposite way, right? So look at this. This moves up, this moves down, right? This moves down and this moves up, okay? We have a C minor chord here, right? And then we have our what? We have our B flat. We have our literally a B flat seven chord and then modulates to E flat. This is the easiest thing you could do. This right here is super common in pop music. Okay. Listen to Christina Perry. She'll tell you what it's all about. Okay. So I hope that kind of helped get a good idea of what modulation is all about and some of the cool things that you can do. I certainly learned a lot um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.